They brought all the fans just ten and a half hours from Dayton here in Charleston. And we are set for semifinal number one. Joel Soriano and Deron Holmes to jump. St. John controls it. Keep an eye on that matchup too. Soriano and Holmes, two of the best players on the court. Holmes was very quiet yesterday in their win over LSU. Jenkins steps back, misses the first shot of the game, and here's Dayton's first possession. The point guard, Javon Bennett, filling the role of Malachi Smith out for the season. First shot for Dayton, rattles around and falls. Kobe Elvis hits it. Elvis is a really good perimeter shooter, and they really feed off of Bennett's penetration. John starting lineup, Dingle and Ledlam, the two New York natives and Ivy League products coming in this year. Two of ten transfers for the St. John's team, 12 total newcomers. It's going to be interesting to see how they wind up playing St. John's post guys because they like that triangle and get the ball inside. Nice job by Holmes to keep that rebound alive for one of his teammates. Here's Elvis. Turnover. Jenkins coming the other way. Up for Ledlam. Big man. And there's the stanchion on the baseline. Foul called against Dayton. Goes against Santos, his first. St. John's will like the run. Coach Patino wants to get his bigs. Ludlam and Santos out really running. For Dayton, a great chance this weekend to build the resume. Preseason favorites in the A-10 for St. John's. Chance for a very quality win, but just to keep building, to keep making progress in year one under Rick Pitino. Soriano, right hand hook, no good. Ledlam, he double covered, that rolls off. And this will stay at this end. Ledlam and Soriano on the glass. They. Yeah, they're both so physical and so aggressive. When they really learn to be able to play off of each other, it's going to be very formidable for opponents to try to stop them. Soriano on the low block, lost it for a second, working on Holmes. Good matchup. Spins, traveled. See, I, I really think they have to get Soriano the ball more inside the paint or not, he can't allow himself to get kicked off the block that far. Here's Bennett, just five foot ten, a buck fifty-five. He is talented. Holmes never really got going yesterday. Top of the key, three goes for Nate Santos. Picks up right where he left off. Santos lives off the spacing that Holmes creates when he does that dribble handoff with Elvis and Bennett. Santos, three of six from deep yesterday, part of his 19 points. Soriano, mid-range jumper. He can't hit. Had some decent looks so far, but St. John's still coming up empty. Two and a half minutes in. Trying to get Deron Holmes going. That rolls off. Taylor with it. Dingle, transition, triple. That's something that St. John's missed yesterday. They're really going to try to push the transition and get Dingle going. Holmes lost it. Another turnover. Inside Dingle. Couldn't finish. Cheeks has it. Santos from the mid range. Great close out from Soriano. Rebound goes to Ledlam. Feeding Soriano, Ledlam, three ball. See, I think when Ledlam gets the ball right there, Soriano really has to post hard in the lane so they can go a little bit of high-low action. Great look, cross court. 
No good. Santos offensive rebound. Santos going baseline. Reverse layup. Nate Santos. He's found a home in Dayton. He's a tough cover for either Sariantos or Lanham. Great response quickly from Glenn Taylor. Whistle in the backcourt against Jenkins. That's his first foul. There you stand. Love the reaction in the locker room. Anthony Grant, who you were talking yesterday, he's a pretty mellow, laid-back guy. He was fired up. Well, to see your team come back on that kind of effort and toughness, it makes a coach feel good. Coaches like their team to reflect their personality. You definitely see that with this Dayton team. Here's Kobe Brea. He can shoot it, too. He hit the game tying three with 47 seconds left yesterday. Trying one right now, and he knocks it down. They have good balance. They got good inside balance, good ball handling balance, good shooting balance. It's Brea's first attempt off the bench. Zuby edge of four in for St. John's now. The Kansas transfer, nice finish by Dingle off the glass. Bennett's going to have to be able to handle the pressure that St. John is going to put on Dayton. Six to shoot. Bennett has it. Dingle guarding. Bennett rises. Tough shot, too strong. Edge of four. And here comes Taylor. Taylor, long stride in the lane, rolls off, but a foul called. And two shots coming up for Glenn Taylor Jr. Rhea gives him a really good pickup from the bench because he comes in, can shoot the basketball, can guard, and his ability to stretch the defense with the three also plays well off of Santos' ability to shoot the basketball. Junior from Washington Heights, New York. Kobe Brea playing through some pain last year, offseason surgery to insert rods into both legs to address stress, stress fractures he dealt with in his tibias. Taylor hits the first free throw. That to sounds cut it, to two. it does not sound like fun. Malachi Smith, the point guard they're missing, which is why Javon Bennett in the lineup starting for them, playing really well too. But Smith had surgery to report to repair a torn meniscus in his right knee last week. He's out for the season. Taylor hits both one point game. Again, St. John's now with the pressure. Bennett has, done, has played with a lot of poise. He's doing a really good job. I talked to Coach Grant, and he talked about yesterday when he wound up taking Holmes out. He thought in the Northwestern game they got worn down, so he was very conscious of not having his team get worn down in the second half of the game yesterday. Yeah, I'm sure he'll do the same thing today and giving guys some blows. Stops at VCU and Alabama as a head coach. Now in year seven at Dayton. Bennett in trouble, fell down, traveled. And that was Simeon Wiltshire guarding him, the freshman. This kid, I think he's talented. He's a big-time recruit for St. John's. Wiltshire helps force that turnover. Bennett's going to need some help with the ball handling. He cannot go 40 minutes by himself handling the St. John's pressure. Simon Wiltshire matched up. Taylor going toward the baseline, gets inside, kicks it out. Now Wiltshire. Edge of four, trying to go high-low, couldn't find the passing lane. Ledlam. Edge of four. Some contact there. Gets his own miss. 
Zubi Ejiofor puts it back in. That's the physical presence that St. John's brings. They don't miss much when they go with Ejiofor. Inside, got it to go, and one chance for Zimmy Wokeji. Great cut. Well, Casey keeps his head up. That's the key on that play. He keeps his head up, finds the rim, is able to follow through. A lot of guys, Chucky, will put their head down, expecting the contact. He kept his head up and was able to locate the rim. Trying to finish off the three-point play and does. And a couple subs coming in for St. John Soriano. And Jenkins back into the game. Dayton's pressure was a big reason they got back into it against LSU yesterday, forcing 15 turnovers. Wilshire can also play some of the point and take some of the pressure off of Jenkins. Jenkins, mid-range jumper, doesn't get the roll. Soriano, he is fouled. Two shots coming for Joel Soriano. Double-double machine had another one yesterday. Second of the season in three games. He was just a rebound shy in the game against Michigan from a double-double. And they lost at Madison Square Garden, where Sunday, two big games taking place. Number five, UConn, taking on the Indiana Hoosiers at 1 Eastern. Then number 19, Texas and Louisville. Exciting day of boots. Louisville hoping for much more success this year than last. When the coach comes in, first meeting, says, I'm making you my captain. That speaks volumes, especially when that coach is Rick Pitino. And that's what he did with Soriano. Now in his 70s, and you see him on the sideline right there. Barking orders, doesn't change. Ton of energy. What a finish inside. Elvis is a tremendous offensive player. He has good ball skills. He can really he can shoot the ball, but he also can score in traffic. Wiltshire trying to cut through the defense. He's fouled. St. John's will go through this dribble handoff series, and what it basically does is to get the defense moving so they can set a side ball screen or get the ball inside to one of their post people. But they give you that false action, Chuck, to get the defense moving so they can set up to go where they really want to go with the ball. Wiltshire getting inside. Left-hand layup is good from the freshman. Elvis steps back. Rolls off. Turnover on St. John's. Brady Dunlap stepped on the sideline. What an atmosphere here. The intensity level is tremendous. And St. was one of the best stations at Five Star. Our old Seth Greenberg was the teacher there. Dick Vitale was. But that's, that's a basketball purist. He started as a head coach a long time ago at Boston University. St. John's and Dayton tied at 16. Travel. Rick Pitino made that call. Oh, yes, he did. St. John switching on that action. Elvis thought he had a passing lane, but he didn't. 
I'm impressed. They've got Wilcher now really playing the point and initiating. I don't know if that was a game plan, but that's the first time he's really played that many minutes playing the point. So we've seen Brady Dunlap in the game today. Here goes Wilcher again. Has a size advantage there in the Soriano. Not sure if he lost that. What they're doing is setting up high horn screens where both those guys are coming up and setting screens and then one is rolling, one is popping. Inside, nice move. Gets the bucket again. Lokeji. Lokeji's come in and he's made his presence known. He's giving them some real strong play on the glass. Ledlam is a low. <laughs> Two free throws coming up for him, but how about Simi Wokeji on the other end? I tell you, he's been really impressed. He's come off the bench, and he's attacked. He's taken the ball right to the paint and been able to keep his head up and follow through. You know, Seriano and Ledlam keep pressure on you at the rim because they keep attacking. And... It's not that they play above the rim, but they're so physical that they get to the front of the rim and they're able to finish. Sunday, Duke women's basketball taking on number six, Stanford inside Maples Pavilion. Three Eastern, New Pacific on ABC. Don't miss that one. We'll be finishing up here in Charleston on Sunday as Ledlam hits the free throw. And we are tied again now at 18. Contact yeah, finally yeah. Dingle with the takedown. Bet it does what smart guards do. He got in front of him, then stopped. And the guy ran right up his back. A lot of what happens today is going to be on Bennett's back. He's got to be able to handle the pressure between Jenkins and also Wilshire now playing a lot of point. They're going to keep the pressure on him. And these St. John's guards, they're big. They're six three and up. I mentioned Javon Bennett is five foot ten, a buck fifty five. Into his feet somehow handles handles and Holmes. He has been quiet again to start this game. Bennett wrap around feed. Holmes right on cue. Rocks the rim. That time Holmes got his feet set, read the defense, and was able to finish. That's the aggression that you look for from a player of that type of talent. Three, no. Soriano, offensive rebound. Got Holmes up. Count the bucket. <laughs> Soriano knows how to use that body. He creates angles. He doesn't try to explode over top of you, but he gets, he lays his body on you. There you see Holmes. Great throw. Great finish at the rim explosively. Now Soriano uses his body. See how he gets an angle right there. So you have to go through his body, and he finishes at the rim. Senior from Yonkers, most improved player in the Big East a season ago, gives St. John's the lead. I think big body players that know how to use their body like that and angles are the most difficult guys to guard. You almost do better playing behind them and make them have to shoot through you than try to get around them. Such a good matchup between Soriano and Deron Holmes. Lost it, and there's a foul. Dingle fouled by Bennett after he lost the handle. Anthony Grant's going to have to be patient with Bennett. He's going to face this type of pressure for 40 minutes. He's going to make a couple mistakes. you got to keep being encouraging with him and positive, yet still being demanding, and that's the tough part, part of being a coach. St. John's in the bonus already. One and one for the next nine and a half minutes. Well, that's what happens when you get the ball inside to the big guys, and they're able to create foul situations. Engel hits the first one. Senior from Valley Stream, New York. Started the last two games after he came off the bench in the opener, the reigning Ivy League Player of the Year last year, former Ivy League Rookie of the Year at Penn. 
His dad was a big time player for John Calipari at UMass. How cool is that? He plays for <laughs> Cal and now his son playing for another one of the great coaches in Rick Patino. It is the Philadelphia legend. Elvis skips it. Patagimus. Three ball. Petrus from Lithuania, the freshman. The biggest thing about that is Dayton is not letting St. John's pressure disrupt them. They're taking their time. They're still looking to run their offense. That is a frustrating turnover for the Red Storm. The one thing that they're doing, Dayton, is keeping their heads up. A lot of times you get hit with pressure, you put your head down, and it forces you to drive or put the ball on the floor. But Dayton is looking at their cuts, reading their offense. Holmes off his foot. Here comes Dingle. Taylor with him. Dingle, physical take. No! straight away that's his shot though Holmes came up set the ball screen Jenkins great patience open three the pace of this game is incredible another three off the feed from Holmes Soriano pulls in the rebound it is it's back and forth right now Jenkins turn, whips it back up top, Traore, that won't go, there is a lid on it. But they're just, they're, they're going after each other, I mean, the intensity level, the pace of this game, this early in the season, and they're, they're not turning it over, I mean, they're getting good looks and their execution is really good. Dayton's slowing things up now. Elvis, he's been aggressive early on. Fake, leans in, can't get the roll. Patagivas, nice offensive board. Patagivas would come in and give him a real nice boost. Eight to shoot for Brea. Steps back, really tough shot. Good defense by St. John's. I thought he should have thrown the ball in the home at that time. He had the defense on his back. Mariano and Holmes battling underneath there. Long three. Jenkins hits it. One of the things that Coach Patino has always preached when people know is conditioning. When he was at Kentucky, they felt like their team was the best conditioned team in the country. To play this style, you have to be in really great shape. And you can see that with Jenkins. Three-point lead. He put pressure on the ball. He runs the offense. And he knows Rick Pitino from his time at Iona. Nice blow by, by Bennett that time to get a couple back. I'm really impressed with Bennett. I'm impressed with his mentality, how he's handling the pressure. He's still running the offense, and he's taking advantage of his scoring opportunities. Lobbing to Soriano. Great positioning. Soriano with the finish. Feet there too by Danis Jenkins. This is a game when they sub, when the coach subs you, nobody's gonna complain. They can use a break. Just about a line change waiting at the table right now for St. John's. Looks like a team calendar <laughs> shoot over there, the way they're sitting. St. John's by three. The big man starting to get going here, Joel Soriano. Well, Soriano is definitely a difference maker. And turnovers with this type of pace, which shows you the intensity level both these two teams are playing with. It is a treat for fans, certainly for neutral fans. I think there's some stress levels for Dayton and St. John's fans right now. 
side. Nice move. Cheeks lost his footing and could not put it in. Edge of four took a shot on that rebound. Ledlam, big strong stride, and it goes over the backboard. They're, al they're allowing Ledlam to catch the ball in the corner and make him make plays from there. I'm not so sure that's something Rick is going to live with throughout the whole season. I think he's much better at the high post and in the low block area than in the corner trying to operate. Under five to play, first half. <laughs> Elvis, foul called against Taylor. Elvis is really good off the bounce. He's able to create space when he goes off the bounce, and he shoots it well enough that you have to be up on it. You see how he goes into the defense right there, keeps his head up. That's one of the things you look at when guys drive. Where are they looking at? Are they is the head fine? Is the eyes finding the rim, or do they put their heads down and just try to bully to the basket? He keeps his head up, eyes on the basket, and that's why he's such a good offensive player. Four transfers for Dayton, three of them in the starting lineup. That's the first free throw. Women's hoop season underway, continuing tonight. The featured matchup on ESPN Plus, number seven LSU, taking on Southeastern Louisiana at eight Eastern, seven Central. And this that game. So much star power in the women's game right now. And, and not just the players like the Angel Reese and Haley Van Lid for LSU, Caitlin Clark, but the coaches. There's so many great star coaches. And I tell you, they're all really good coaches and such fine players. I mean, the skill level in the women's game is really special. Edge of four fighting. He is having a really good first half off the St. John's bench. If he gives them a big boost to give them a third post guy that can bang and that can score and that can defend. You know, one of the things you look for in these tournaments is depth. And St. John's is looking for depth in their front court. Edge of four is a big key, especially when they get to Big East play. They have got to have another post guy that can come in. And play. Without question, just. With foul trouble, with schedule, with travel and everything, you need that. There you see Edgerford, Edgerford right there. Again, he's another guy that uses angles as opposed to athleticism and jumping over top of you. He's the 80th ranked recruit on the ESPN 100 last year. Started his career at Kansas. Coached by Bill Self. Wiltshire turns it over. That'll take us to our final media timeout of the first half. St. John's Dayton. And told the official, we're St. John's and this is the garden. And all of a sudden, everything changed. But Bobby Kremens certainly left, left a strong imprint here and at Georgia Tech. Looking for a really good one here. So far, that's what we've had. Three-point game. St. John's leading Dayton. Soriano on the bench right now. Holmes is out there, and here he is. Holmes inside, left hand, count the bucket, and a chance to tie it. What's more important is Elvis is now on the point. We we're waiting to see what happens when Bennett got worn down a little bit because you know he can't go 40 minutes. And Elvis comes in and runs a good high ball screen right there and delivers the ball to Holmes, and he's able to finish. That's a big move right there for Dayton to be able to get more point guard play from somebody other than Bennett. Holmes completes the three-point play, so as soon as he scored, Soriano was off the bench at the table and coming in for edge of four. They don't want Holmes to get going, because once he gets going, he can be hard to stop. Dayton now comes with the pressure of their own. Wiltshire almost lost it, now Soriano. Ledlam fighting with Patagemus inside. He likes this matchup. Turning off the glass. No. Tipped by Soriano. Foul called. And it's going the other way. See, it's almost better to play behind the St. John's post guys. Not giving them angles and make them shoot over top of you. Because they don't play above the rim. They use angles. He sees this plays right behind him and makes him shoot over top of him. That's a lot more difficult than trying to give him angles. 
that right there, Deron Holmes bringing it across, big for Dayton to be able to eliminate some of that pressure. Something you talked about in the first game, actually, with LSU, let somebody else bring the ball up like a big man. And he's got the ability to do that. Elvis, Holmes, extra pass. Cheeks, reverse layup, no, Panagimas, what a tag! Panagimas has come off the bench and given a great pickup for this Dayton team. Five points for him. Crowd on their feet. This is November or March, my goodness. Jenkins, no look feed. That is a mismatch. Long pass. Holmes flushes it. Oh, baby. Back and forth we go. Ledlam, no good foul called. And take a breath. <laughs> There you see great drive right there. Didn't go. Kind of game is touched, tipped it in. Now they come right back. They go into Seriano, finishes with a flush. Not to be outdone. Holmes comes right back and finishes with another dunk. Two shots for Ledlam gets the first one to roll in. One point game. Wiltshire goes to the bench. Coach, both coaches are doing a great job of rotating guys and keeping guys fresh. Ledlam ties at the chess match well underway between Rick Pitino and Anthony Grant today. Here's Holmes again, and it just completely relieves that pressure. Brea. Holmes starting to look a lot more confident. Out to Brea, contested. He didn't have a clean catch on that. Oh, hustle by Sheik. Soriano did a nice job to recover that ball. Now here goes Jordan Dingle. Long stride. Off the glass, cannot get the roll. Elvis floats it up, rims off. Give it right back. Up, okay. down, layup is good. Cheek with a great steal and attack the rim. These Dayton Flyers do not back off. They got aggressive against LSU, got them back in the game. They're matching St. John's right now with their own physicality. Soriano dunks it with Holmes on his hip. You can't let him get that deep, though. I talk about playing behind, but you can't let him bury you underneath the basket. Now Holmes' turn. Inside, rolls in, charge, called on Deron Holmes. Anthony Grant is on the court. He cannot believe it. His assistant coaches had to contain him. Technical, there it is. And he is hot. He is. And he doesn't get upset too often. He did not like that call. Anthony does not get this upset that often. They see ball fake right there. I thought it was a block. Hey, there's a rule change this year, too. You, you got to have your feet set before he takes off. Before that last foot yeah. hits the ground and he takes off, you have to be in legal guarding position. It was hard to tell, but you say you think it or This is high-level stuff so far. Is this November or March? I tell you what, that was a lot closer than what I thought because it looked like he was there before he took off. Ledlam 
Soriano battling underneath right now with Isaac Jack in there. Transfer from Buffalo trying to contain Soriano. Jenkins has it. Soriano, they want him to shoot it. That's why he gets it to go. He's having a day. He is so competitive. That's why he's the captain. His fire, his passion represents Coach Patino. Now the St. John's crowd on their feet. Jack with a pump fake. No. Offensive rebound. Another try and he gets it. Two seconds. Jenkins launches. It's not going to go. 40-38 at halftime. Joel Soriano has 14 to lead the way. What a start we've had. High-level stuff. High and I will tell you, you know, we have a really big time officiating crew and Kip Kissinger was a guy that hit him with the tack. He's one of the finest people and referees in the game. So uh, it's just sport, it's just gamesmanship right now. Kip, Ron Groover, and Antonio Petty are three officials today. Enoch Cheeks driving inside, gets an easy layup, count the bucket. Immediately tied at 40. And that's an interesting set. They put Cheeks at the elbow. He caught it at the elbow and just really turned and attacked the basket. This is what they did to LSU yesterday. They just thought to attacking, not looking for threes, but taking the ball hard to the basket to get to the foul line. This is Soriano pulls down the rebound. He's well on his way to another double-double, 14 points. Five boards early in the second half. Danis Jenkins, leading score yesterday with the answer, and he goes around Cheeks to do it. Jenkins is so clever with the ball. He is the leader of this St. John's team. Poked away by Dingle. Inside, gets it up, no, follows good, and Dingle had just got an earful from Rick Patino on the last play. Rick has a way of motivating you. And he looked at him right there. Rick Pitino gave Jordan Dingle a fist pump. Elvis, nice pass. Cole with the two-hand flush. This is a different home than we saw yesterday. Much more aggressive. Calling for the basketball. Attacking. Taylor looking for a response. Inside, physical take, and lays it in. Neither one of these two teams are backing off. They're attacking each other, trying to get the ball into the paint. And it brings it across, working on Danis Jenkins. Holmes swings it quickly. Pretty open three on the wing. Short rebound. Ledlam. They want to run. Here comes Dingle. Four guys around him, and Dingle lost it. Fight for the ball to stay with St. John's. We talk about action where you can get home with the basketball. There you see him with the high ball screen and the roll. Because they're shooting the basketball, they space it so nobody can rotate and catch the roll. Again, we talked about Holmes. You know, Coach Grant said he rested him a lot yesterday. He did. He wants him fresh going down the stretch. Everybody gets a day off tomorrow as Bennett got a piece of it. <laughs> Rick is telling him, hey, you got to post up hard. You got to come meet the basketball. You, a lot of times you have to have the same aggression offensively that you have defensively. Robbed up top. Santos got a piece of it. Santos didn't play a ton in the first half because of foul trouble. Only played eight minutes. Holmes also has two fouls. Jenkins the only guy for St. John's with two. Dingle got it to go. What a shot from Jordan Dingle. Dingle has the ability because of his strong upper body to finish with contact. 
And what Coach Patino is trying to get him to do is be aggressively attacking because Bennett not only has to handle the pressure, he's got a guard. So they're talking about wearing him down on both ends of the floor. St. John's largest lead of the day here at six. Santos working with Holmes. Holmes pump fake. Here we go. Kicks it out. Open three. Elvis. The poise in which that this Dayton team is playing with right now. Trying to go to Soriano. And here we go. Look at this matchup. Soriano working on Holmes. Right hook shot. Is good. Says, hey, you're too small. You got to keep moving your feet and get your hands up. You can't give Soriano angles, but he's so good at finding angles that he's tough to guard. Does Dayton have an answer? Baseline. Nice little step through reverse layup for Enoch Cheeks. Great spacing that time by the Dayton Ball Club. Jenkins getting downhill, pushes it through. Lost his footing, turnover St. John's. Suriano is so strong. Okay, you got to keep moving your feet. You got to try to stay in front of him and get your hands up. The hands are down so he can locate the basket. And that's what he's saying. You're just too small. You're not strong enough to keep me off my spots. But the thing about it, Soriano is such a competitor. I mean, the thing that I like, both of these guys, both he and Holmes are stepping their game up because they know this is a very competitive, tough basketball game. Nobody's taking a backward step. Holmes, baseline, his turn, working on Soriano, spinning, off the glass, there's your answer. I'm telling you, nobody's backing up now. And okay, I got something for you. Ten to shoot, Taylor. Jenkins rises, helps it, Davis Jenkins. You know, the, the, the first trait of a big-time player is competitiveness. And both of these two teams have guys that are really, really competitive. Holmes really running this thing right now. Into the paint, reverse layup, rolls off. Here comes Taylor. Jenkins to his left. Sets, fires, rebound Holmes. Elvis up top, Holmes bats it, he's fouled by Taylor. It's a big man's game. I'm telling you, both of these guys have come to compete. We have not been separated by more than six points at any time in this game. I mean, the players showing passion, the coaches showing passion, the officials showing passion. This is a very special time of the year. He cut to three. Both teams have actually led by six at one point, but neither has been able to extend it beyond that. Soriano on the bench for St. John, so maybe some crucial minutes here. Can Holmes exploit something inside as he cuts it to two? No, because he will go to the bench as well. Yeah. Again, Coach Grant is really conscious of keeping his guys fresh going down the stretch line. He felt in the Northwestern game that they ran out of gas a little bit, and he wants he doesn't want that to happen. Long
love this game so far. We've seen pressure from both teams. Jenkins has in there. I will KG, who's back into the game. He's a guy who's had a little foul trouble in this one. He's got three. Inside, Taylor got in a weird spot under the basket. T Taylor has it. Stripped away. Brea got a piece of it. Here comes Brea. Look for Dayton to space the floor. Look for their three-point shooting right now. Dayton has not led in the second half. Brea, take a little push off there. Taylor rebounds. Coach Grant doesn't want him to extend too far right now. Ledlam inside physical take, rims off, offensive rebound, edge of four. And they'll call a foul underneath. Two, two shots for Zuby, edge of four coming up. Coach Grant was trying to push his defense back to pack it a little bit to take away the inside game. The sophomore from Garland, Texas. That's the first. Don't forget our featured lineup this weekend. An NBA doubleheader tonight. Kings, Spurs at 7.30 Eastern, followed by Suns, Jazz. And then college game day tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Eastern. Formula One under the lights in Las Vegas at 11.30 tomorrow night. And a Super Bowl rematch. Eagles, Chiefs on Monday Night Football. Santos comes back in to give him a little bit more offense. Tracks down the rebound on the free throw miss. Three point lead for St. John's. Bennett fires from long range, rims out. Jenkins. That's just lost the shoe. St. John's back with the pressure. Bennett carving through it. Spinning. Santos, long stride, lays it up, count that bucket. Santos is a tough matchup for any four-man because he puts the ball on the floor like a two or a three, and he's really good off the dribble, and you got to go out and play him because he can shoot the basketball. It's just a tough matchup. He has had some big buckets the last couple nights. None bigger than the game winner last night. So far, make it eight, and the lead down to two. Dayton comes with the pressure. Bingo, Soriano, right hand push shot, no roll. Rebound Santos. Inside, Jack with oh. him! Oh, Jack has Jack. stepped up the play. Inside, Taylor trying to respond. Soriano rebound. Another try and he's fouled by Jack. Jack has come in and has done an unbelievable job on the glass. See him posted up there, reverses. The key thing is he keeps his head up so he's able to find the spot on the rim. 
So many guys get the ball, they lower their heads, and they don't pick up the basket until they're about to let the ball go. But his, with Jack's competitive spirit has been really special in this game. Isaac Jack, a sophomore from British Columbia, transferred from Buffalo, where he made 20 starts last year, just under six points per game, about four boards per game. And he's a late bloomer to college basketball, to basketball in general. Didn't really start playing seriously until 2020. He has really made a great contribution today. But the guy at the line, Soriano, I mean, certainly he's a key for St. John's success because he just does so many things besides score and rebound. He, he brings a lot of passion. Wiltshire guarding Bennett. Santos has it. Driving on Jenkins. Goes up, a lot of contact, he'll go to the line for two. I keep telling you, Santos is a tough guard because his offensive skills are so good that you have to go playing for the three, and he's quick enough to put the ball on the floor and go around you if, you, if you're sloppy or slow on your closeouts. But the key, I think the key for, for, for Dayton has been Bennett's play at the point. They have not been able to rattle him. He's not turned it over. He's allowed Dayton to get into their offensive flow, and he's kept the pressure on defensively. So he's just done a tremendous job, I think. For the lead. Dayton's first lead since it was 36-34 with a minute 26 left in the first half. Their fans on their feet. in the backcourt. I think they might be looking at the clock wow. here. So the shot clock never started on that inbound, so they'll put 25 on the shot clock. Two seconds subtracted. Faithful. Thank you, UD Arena. Long way to go in this one. Dayton by one over St. John's. You do not want to miss how this finishes. Yeah, and they've been able to live with that. The improvements from 21 to 20, and 21, 22 to 22, 23. That's why he was Big East's most improved player. Averaged a double double last year, 15 and 12. Added 47 blocks. It's his third season at St. John's after two at Fordham. They go to him right on cue. Gets it to fall. Holmes is letting him get too deep. I talked about playing behind him some and making him shoot over top of you, but you can't let him get that deep. Bennett is out getting a blow right now. Holmes working with Cheeks. Cheeks inside, goes into Soriano, finishes. Taylor mid-range jumper. Rebound, Brea. Holmes did a great job of blocking out Soriano that time. Holmes from three. Yes! <laughs> You see, he turned to the Dayton fans and pointed at him. Holmes did. Holmes, he is fired up, and he has not shown a lot of emotion today. That's another big play.
when he's left there by himself to make sure he dots every I and crosses every T. They'll meet Sunday night, 8 Eastern on ESPN for the Charleston Classic Championship. Ben, really and ben is back in the game now after he's got a little bit of rest. Guarded by Wiltshire. Here's Holmes working against Edge of Four. Trying to go up top, batted away, nice defense. Recovered, 12 to shoot for Elvis. Soriano on the bench for St. John's. Elvis in, no. Gets his own rebound. Holmes to the hoop, lays it up. No good. Another offensive board. Holmes much more aggressive now. Spinning. Reaching on Ledlam. You know, when I talked to Anthony Grant yesterday, he pulled Holmes. I asked him, were you pulling him because he wasn't playing well? It was he sick or anything? He said, no. I wanted to rest him. I need to pace him. He gives so much so often. I want to make sure he's fresh for the whole weekend. And you can see it's paid dividends yesterday. It's paying dividends today because he is really playing extremely hard. Two free throws for him. It's the first one Sunday. More hoops coming your way. Two matchups at Madison Square Garden. The Yukon Huskies and the Indiana Hoosiers first at 1 Eastern, then Texas and Louisville. Exciting day of hoops at the Mecca. Holmes hits the second free throw. Six-point lead, matching their largest lead of the contest. Into Soriano, who got a quick spell. Skips it out. Extra pass. Jenkins three. Holmes running the floor. Elvis skips across. Brea fouled on the three. Ledlam knew it. That was pretty obvious. Three free throws. The spacing that, that Dayton is doing on this on this transition break is allowing them to get dribble penetration post up and also three-point shooting they're very well organized in their transition offense 7-0 run for anthony grant and company over the last minute 40. they're checking to see if it was a two or a three at the monitor right now see that right foot clearly a three, be three. His fourth season. His godfather is the former St. John star Felipe Lopez, who played there from 1994 oh to 98. Great player. You talk about a St. John's icon. What's going through Rick Patino's mind right now? Uh, he, he's already figured out offensively where he wants to get the ball. Also, what type of pressure he wants to use defensively, how he wants to play going down the stretch. Brea gets two of three. Largest lead of the game for Dayton. Still plenty of time. It's interesting for Rick right now. That he has Wiltshire running the point. Jenkins slashing, floats it. Just not falling. They're getting some good looks. Yeah, so go. Jenkins is normally the guy that runs the point, but he's trying to integrate Wiltshire in there, running the point. Elvis rebound Soriano. Move by Taylor to switch hands. Holmes kicks it out. Contested three. It goes big time from Kobe Brown. 
That's what they do. They spread you out with the shooters. Soriano with the answer. That time, he created a little space that time. Elvis back to Holmes. Rebound Ledlam. There's a round Soriano. Ledlam shot blocked. Kicked out for Taylor. He had the last bucket. They wave this off. They'll say it's on the floor. There's so much of coaching is knowing what buttons to push for your players and what will make them react. And certainly Anthony recognized that that was important to Holmes for him to step up and support him like that. Ron Holmes preseason Naismith and wouldn't watch war or wouldn't award watch list. Among others, as Dayton forces a turnover out of a timeout, which is just the opposite of what Rick Patino wanted. They will really take their time now. Santos, oh. what a take! Nate Santos, big bucket after big bucket. He is so tough. He is a tough handle out of that four spot because he can shoot it, so you have to come out and play him. But he puts the th ball on the floor and attacks the basket and can finish. He's so strong that if you close out incorrectly like that and get on his side with a smaller player, he can finish over top of you. This Dayton team is put together with really good pieces that fit. So unselfish, too. Oh, uh, without question. Double-digit lead for the Flyers. Under seven to play. Does St. John's have it in them? It's a lot of time, though. It's a lot of time. Jenkins for three. Tipped up rebound Taylor, who's been really good for them. And he lays it in. Glenn Taylor has been huge. Two things right now they're going to have to do. They're going to have to rebound. Another one! Santos, are you kidding me? And they're going to have to keep giving the ball to Santos. <laughs> His teammates are laughing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> and Rick Pitino is just telling L L London, you got to guard him. you got to be able to guard him. you got to be able to give us something down the defensive end. Short on the free throw. Soriano, another rebound. One shy of a double-double. He's got 21 points. Isaac Jack called for a foul. Battling with Soriano underneath. John's still two away from the bonus. Lincoln's passed up the look. I think he thought he had to go around Jack, but he didn't bite. Ledlam, he connects. That little talk with Patino getting Ledlam really worked. We told him you got to get out of the middle so they can't clog it so much. Javon Bennett bumped. He will go to the line in the one and one. What they wanted to do was get some space in so that they can't sit on Seriano. So Lullum has to step away and not knock down some shots. It's going to be a lot of pressure on Bennett the next 
five minutes and 41 seconds. If he thought he saw pressure before, he's going to see a whole lot more now. It's the first free throw. Get the roll on the second one. Taylor does not have numbers. He kind of tried to force it. Bennett, Santos, too strong that time. But Bennett is all over it for a jump ball, and it's Dayton basketball. Bennett is really playing extremely well. His leadership, his toughness with the basketball, and most of all, his competitive nature is what you want to see out of your point guard. Holmes versus Soriano. Holmes rises up too strong. And especially so you doesn't wear down your point guard. You get somebody right there and look like it's a foul right there. Look like another foul right there. But you let your four and five be able to bring the ball up because normally the other teams four and five are their weaker one-on-one -on -one defenders. That is Soriano's fourth foul. Ruby Edge of four will check in for him. We'll see how long. Media timeout coming up. You'll probably let him sit maybe to about the three-minute mark, and then at that point, depending on time and score, get through the TV timeout at for four minutes. Seven-point lead for the Flyers. Look for Jenkins right now to try to attack. A lean out there, Jenkins from three. Every time down now, Dayton's gonna run some clock. Holmes against Sedgefour. Holmes has 20 and he wants it right now. Spinning. Whistle on the foul or on the floor against yeah. Edge of Four, and it's two shots regardless for Holmes. Holmes has really stepped up today. As much as we talked about yesterday and how he played and was not as aggressive, he has really stepped up. And a lot of it has to do with Coach Grant saying, want to make sure he got his rest. It, the Northwestern game took a lot out of him. Making foul shots now. You've got to make your foul shots to close the deal. 17 of 22 at the line. St. John's 14 of 18. James has been very good at the line. Eight of nine now. Four minutes to go. Ledlam blocked by Holmes, but the putback by Edge of Four. Everybody has to rebound. St. John's will go hard at the glass right now. Holmes really likes this matchup. No, but the foot! They play off of each 
each other so well. Ran down by Ledlam. Eight to shoot. Jenkins driving. A great defense. Back to Ledlam. Has to rip it. No good. Holmes rebounds. Three minutes to play. They're going to take their time now. They're going to burn some clock. Soriano left with the 4,000. No clock stoppages until now to get him back in with 2.41 to go. Dayton by eight. They have done it every which way you can imagine. The energy that Dayton has finished, and when he needed help, Santos and Brea have stepped up and, and given them the knockout punch. Dayton ball, nine to shoot. Nine-point lead. It has been Holmes so many times. Santos with big buckets. Holmes fades. No good. Rebound Ledlam. Soriano stays on the bench for St. John's. They've got to chase some threes right now. Look for them to go to the curl action. Foul called on Bennett. team They're about resiliency from 15 down yesterday they never trail by more than six in this game but they just do not blink no and he's able to challenge them you know and, and he challenged them yesterday he stood up for them today and they responded to both emotions Ledlam is a good cut but he couldn't handle it another turnover I am so impressed with Bennett he is Chucky, I don't think you understand all the things this young man had to do at the point. He had to handle pressure. Oh, and here we go. Taylor and Brea. There was a technical issue. Let's see what happens. We got to sort this out. Right of your screen. Oh, yeah. Too much talk. His kip's coming over to tell us. It's a little shove initially by Brea. Double personal foul and then a double technical foul. And all of those will offset is what Kip Kissinger just told us. So it's just going to be Dayton Ball on the sideline. Yeah. Yes. Chucky, this is an excellent offic officiate crew. These guys have done NCAA tournaments, Final Four. This game is in really, really good hands. And that's what I said. Even when Coach Grant got upset, I think that was as much about protecting his players and showing his players, I'm with you. You know, we're going to fight and, and the competitive spirit because that's the passion that Anthony has, Coach Grant has with his team. That's the relationship that he has with Holmes. And it really did a great job to inspire Holmes. He played great. And this is a big time. This is a big time win for Dayton. National Coach of the Year in 2020, Anthony Grant on the bottom, Rick Pitino on top. One of the all-time winningest coaches in college basketball history. And St. John's rally late. Bennett in trouble. Four to shoot. Santos, are you kidding me? Nate Santos is out of this world. extremely well. He's been a mismatch 
for anybody that's tried to guard him. And what causes it is you got to close out on him because he'll shoot it like he did yesterday. And when you close out on him, he puts it on the floor and he's strong enough to finish. <laughs> Anthony Grant is loving Charleston. Double technicals, Brea, and he just he just got ran. Yeah, that was his second. It's too much talking. It's just too much talking, and this officiating crew is not going to have it. And Kobe Brea is gone. Is it Santos that's gone or Brea? Brea, it was his second technical, and they're kind of yeah, they're taking him off the court right now. He throws up a heart to the Dayton faithful, which they love. Soriano is on the bench along with Taylor. They have both fouled out. Ledlam has four. You know, both teams have competed hard. And it's been, they've gone after each other. You know, the game should be done physically, not orally. And you show what you got with how hard you play, the effort you give, and not by trying to explain why something is a certain way. Edge of four. Inside working on Holmes. Nice finish there. Still a 10-point game. Cheeks was fouled on the inbound. Two shots for Enoch. Cheeks coming up. It's important right now to not knock down your foul shots. You know, it's still time. You've been around long enough. You've seen a lot of things happen. Four transfers for Dayton. All four of them have been huge today. Javon Bennett running the point. Nate Santos, the transfer from Pitt. Enoch Cheeks at the line, the transfer from Robert Morris. And how about the minutes from Isaac Jack? Off the bench as well. Huge the spot. Huge. Back to a 12-point game. Patino takes a timeout. Semi-final. It's a growing process. I mean, and, and Rick understood that. He said, I took the best offensive players that I could get. Now I got to mold them into a defensive unit that can do what we need done. They won it with defense yesterday. Today ended up being an offensive game, even though physical. 86-74. Dingle inside. That's it back to 10. 60 seconds remain. Just got to take care of the ball right now. Cheeks lost it for a second. Bennett's there to clean it up. He's fouled near midcourt by Dingle. Two free throws coming up. Again, they, when, they, when they break the press, I think you have too many people down there on the offensive end, and they almost lost the ball with that. You flash guys to come to be receivers, and then they clear out so the guy with the ball can bring it up, and he can see the double team coming. Now for today's <laughs> player of the game, brought to you by Shriners Children's, Deron Holmes. 21 points. He was huge, and really, he wanted it in the second half. Without question. He did it defensively. He did it on the glass. He did it offensively. He did it bringing the ball up. Side Ledlam lays it up and in to cut it back to 10 with 38.1. See, it's an awful look. See how crowded it is? It's hard right there to get the ball in. I think you've got to space it. You got to come up with something so somebody can cut, get it, then space the floor. That's how they get you get proper seating. And you're going to get a shot at either one of the best teams in the country in Houston or a really good team in the Pac 12 in Utah. For the team pick first.
in the A-10 preseason poll. And it across midcourt. St. John's. Says, All right, that'll do it. Eight to shoot for Duran Holmes. Long way from the basket here, working on Jenkins. Spins inside, blocked by edge of four. Seven seconds here. Arlene hits the triple. Too little, too late. How about those flyers? Dayton takes down St. John's 88 to 81 as Anthony Grant and Rick Patino embrace. What a high level basketball game. The execution this time of the